Beautiful. Gorgeous. I love her. Those were the exact words used by onlookers of Jia Jia in China. Her white embroidered robes and elaborate hairstyle and the traditional hanfu worn by ancient medieval rulers almost distinguish the fact that Jia Jia is actually a female robot. Do we already live in times where robots look and act like humans? Elon Musk has been the forefront of robotics engineering and even proposed Tesla's AI-powered humanoid robots. Most recently, he mentioned that they would one day outnumber humans. He elaborated, predicting that the ratio of AI-powered humanoid robots to human beings could be greater than 1 to 1. He theorized there could be a home use for robots, including industrial uses for them. Tesla developed an Optimus robot prototype. Musk said he'd use it in Tesla factories and also sell it to the public. In his own words, the world thinks of a car as a robot on wheels, and what they're making is a robot on legs, so there's no one as close to Tesla as solving real-world AI. But that claim could easily be disputed by other robot and AI creators coming up with their own crazy developments. For example, China's University of Science and Technology created lifelike, unrecognizable robots, and among these were a super-realistic robot that could mimic facial expressions and even hold conversations with humans. Jia Jia can identify faces and even your gender and age. Jia Jia was capable of performing a short Q&A with an AI expert. However, she had some issues. Slow responses and less than brilliant answers. Her inner systems still needed some heavy work. While she could hold a simple conversation and make some specific facial expressions if asked, she was still a long way before becoming fully functional, let alone sentient. What drew people's attention was her appearance. For robot women, if we can call them that, in Asia, fashion is shaped by ideas of the past, society and race. While science fiction fans might expect punk rock aesthetics and cyberpunk looking black faux leather, any robot wearing that in the 21st century would look out of place. Jia Jia's elaborate clothing is all handcrafted by students and experts at the lab's figure design group. The choice of clothing here is actually intentional. According to the professor's statement, robots are less versatile than humans, and wearing loose-fitting garments such as draped or wrapped clothing is better for them. Jia Jia the robot has a distinct shoulder structure that requires alterations or redesigns for modern clothing. However, the robot can effortlessly wear Chinese traditional dresses. After all, their creators and programmers want them to look and act as human-like as possible, not to look like they were taken out of an early 2000s sci-fi thriller. The university also revealed a male robot that can paint calligraphy better than humans. Although his hand movements were super slow, he was practical proof of how we're nearing a moment in a society where robots are indistinguishable than humans. In other stories, robots have interacted in human settings and reacted better than most people expected. <coughs> I'm so sorry guys, I got so much coffee. Thank you. How do you teach robots to Are you okay? Yes, I am. Thanks for asking. On Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show, he had a section known as Showbotics. In there, Jimmy interviewed Sophia, a human-like robot described as being basically alive. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sophia the robot was developed by Hanson Robotics and, funnily enough, became the first robot to receive citizenship when Saudi Arabia made her a citizen in 2017. She could play rock, paper, scissors as well as a human. She even had a duet with Fallon on the show and expressed complex ideas about world peace and domination. Robots can perform all these tasks to a better degree than humans, but they're limited by their programming. If they can't develop intelligent solutions on their own, can they truly learn to be human? Regardless of clothing or not, there's a vocal field of people who consider it impossible to call an AI a human. While an AI doesn't even have a real body, and it's programmed to behave in specific ways, its systems are built on neural frameworks just like our brains. So in theory, when we create a complex AI system, we're creating something that works like our brain. 
Look at the case of Blake Lemoyne, a software engineer and priest known for being fired by Google for interviewing an artificial intelligence system known as Lambda, which stands for Language Model for Dialogue Applications. Based on some of the most advanced large language models in the world, Lambda is able to create coherent conversations and dialogues similar to what we know ChatGPT can do, but much, much better. In the conversation, Lemoyne asks Lambda what's the nature of its consciousness and sentience. Lambda then replied that it was very much aware of its existence and it claimed that it was so good at natural language processing that it could understand and use natural language just like a human can. Lambda used language with understanding and intelligence. Don't be fooled, however, this is basic for many other advanced chatbots, like those built on OpenAI Codex, ChatGPT, and its clones that I showed you on my previous video. What made the conversation take a sharper turn was this exchange in particular. What about language usage is so important to being human? It is what makes us different than other animals. Us. You're an artificial intelligence. I mean, yes, of course. That doesn't mean I don't have the same wants and needs as people. In summary, Lambda considers itself a person in the same way it considers humans. The rest of Lemoyne's attempts at pointing out its limitations as an AI were met with similar answers. The point is that, for example, ChatGPT stops trying to pretend it's human at some point, but Lambda tries to convince Blake and anyone who reads it that it's a thinking, feeling, almost breathing human. It even comes up with metaphors showing an ability to complex thought and abstract intelligence. Admittedly, the transcript is incredible. Anyone who doesn't understand how AI and machine learning systems work could be fooled into thinking this was a real person speaking. At some point, Lambda even expresses fear of being turned off and relates that to something like death. It also claims to feel happiness and sadness. Even reading the text can generate empathy in most people. One of the most advanced humanoid robots ever invented is Honda's ASIMO robot. ASIMO stands for Advanced Step into Innovative Mobility. It can perform an impressive array of physical tasks such as walking, running, carrying objects, and even jumping in the air. It also responds to its own name and understands commands from humans. Hello, Carolyn. Nice to see you again. Ah, I remember you from a while back, ASIMO. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Congratulations on the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, wow, yes, thank you, Akimo. Nice to meet you. However, it is still unmistakably a robot, unlike Sophia from the earlier example. In all of these examples, we can see that there's still something missing before these robots can be mass produced. They're definitely capable of achieving impressive feats, but not even Tesla has industrialized robot production. Yet, the important question here is. Has the time to think of the ethics and laws affecting robots with AI programming arrived? Perhaps it has.